Hey guys, it's currently Monday. I spent all day yesterday embroidering. <laughs> well, and digitizing. I spent the first portion digitizing. I pretty much just did the auto digitize feature in Wilcom and then tweaked a bunch of stuff. Like just tweaking where the nodes are to make the shapes exactly how I want. Changing up stitch angles, stitch density, blah blah, spacing, all kinds of settings. And honestly, my first stitch out, it was somehow the worst and the best at the same time. <laughs> so this is the first one right here. And it actually looks pretty good at a first glance, but the stitches are not very dense. You see a lot of the sweater through, although this is not the sweater color it's going on to. Although it kind of looks good. The green doesn't really go and kind of blends in too much, but like the strawberries on the green is pretty cute. <laughs> That's not one of the colors. I'm using this one because it was the same one we were doing tests for the logo on the back and it's just become one of the test sweaters. Although I need to actually test on a pink sweater, I think, because for example, on the pink strawberry, you see through a lot of the with the green, but that's not how it would look on a pink sweater. I made some changes like there's kind of a gap here. I made the flower solid and so the yellow sits on top, but I was also increasing stitch density and playing around with different underlays and different densities of underlays because when I have a dense underlay, the stitching looks a lot more solid like this, way more solid, but it's starting to pucker the material and the edges of the strawberries end up being all wonky. Like look right here. And I have some other issues with like, you know, if the machine does a little bit of stitching here, and then comes over here and works its way down, the seam where they join is not very nice when I have the denser underlay and overall denser stitching. And like these flowers keep messing up too and I think it's again, the, it's cause it's doing this little piece and then it's doing the rest. And I'm trying to change the start and end points but because it's a curved object, I, I'm ending up with it filling in two sections anyway. So yeah, I did five stitch outs and the first one, had about a 30 minute stitch time. By the time I got to the end one, it was about 55 minutes, just cause more stitches and whatnot. So <laughs> I think I'm being a little too picky. Like I look back at the first one, it has the best shapes. Like sure, you see a bit of the sweater through, but like, I think I'm being a little too picky about it. Cause I was looking back at this and some other embroidery stuff. And I'm like, I think I'm being too picky. Like you're gonna see some of the shirt through. So I'm gonna try something that's more of a happy medium between my first one and the last one. <laughs> oh, also there's kind of like a, some light ghosting around the top of every object. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, well that's chalk I would use to mark the center. But can you see that? Like look above the strawberry, there's like light ghosting. That's from the presser foot <laughs> pressing into this. Kind of like how you can get a hoop burn. I guess I'm getting presser foot burn. So I'm hoping that's something I can get rid of by just putting in the heat press. But yeah, I think I'm gonna make some tweaks and test it on. I mean, I can do one last test on here just to make it even <laughs> and then try it on the pink. <laughs> and I also technically need to try it on sandstone, but I don't have like a, a B grade sandstone sweater at the moment. I mean, this one was fine, but when Christian was going through and putting all the names on the pink ones, he was quality checking them. And this one has a minor issue. It's probably something I could fix just by stitching it, but kind of by the hood where all these seams meet, it's coming apart a little bit. So this hoodie will be my test subject. <laughs> yeah, so I wanna get this stitching out right away cause it is gonna take a long time and then move on to some other tasks. Cause I'm not gonna sit here and watch the machine the whole time. So the other thing about this design is <laughs> I'm so far only doing chest and the idea was to have a variant that's only sleeves and then a variant that's both. Now obviously it gets to be a lot more work once you start adding on sleeves because if you have all three, that's hooping the sweater three times. Even if it's just the sleeves, that's two hoopings, two stitch outs. So I already had it in my mind like, okay, there could be some kind of base price for the sweaters and then for each section you get, it costs a certain amount more. Oh my God, I rearranged these washies and now I don't know what's where. <laughs> this is for Sarah, by the way. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But yeah, like, because <laughs> my thought was it would kind of be like $5 per embroidered section. But <laughs> I haven't even digitized the sleeves yet. But if it takes me like an hour and a half to do the sleeves, but then it's only like $10 more than getting just the chest, I feel like that doesn't justify the time. Like the machine mostly runs itself, but we do only have one machine, so we're already limited as to how many sweaters we can make in one day. And so now I'm kind of freaking out about the sleeve idea. <laughs> I'm unsure where to go, because I'm like, I could stick to just chests. We could simplify things. It would certainly make it a lot easier on my end, because how do you know how many sweaters to allocate towards each variant in each size? You don't. Like, obviously I could make them on demand, but then you have to limit how many are available in a week because we can only make so many in a week. And it would be easier to just have some pre-made before a launch and then kind of do requests after. Because I'm like, am I starting with too much? Because I was going to do three sweater types the hoodies, the zip ups, the crew necks. But now I can't find a zip up I really like and I'll have to keep looking, but I've put a pin in that. So I'm down to two and now I'm like, am I doing also three different designs? Like just the strawberry would have three variants available in multiple colors on multiple sweater types. Like, is it too much? <laughs> I should have started more simple, like one design on one color or something. And I can still simplify things. But man, the, the dots on the strawberries, that's an ambitious thing to embroider because the machine has to embroider a little bit and then trim the thread, move to a new section, do another little bit. It's so many trims. Like when you're digitizing, you want to have as few trims as possible and as few color changes as possible. The color sequencing is already optimized as much as it can be. And the strawberry dots are just going to just stay the way they are, the seeds. Because I did a test at the past where I put down the seeds first and then did red on top because that way it could just travel from seed to seed without having to trim, but it didn't look good. <laughs> the seeds gotta go on top. But yeah, I'm wondering like maybe designs with the sleeves, would that be better off doing something like a vinyl transfer? Because I do have a heat press. I have other options. I can do other types of clothing, not just embroidery, but I still want the embroidery to be like the main thing. And I'm not ready to dive into other... <laughs> other things yet <laughs> yeah I'm sitting here like is it really feasible to do the sleeve designs but I kind of want to try them I'm scared I'm gonna love them so much and then I'm gonna want to do them anyway it's quiet too quiet <laughs> stopped for bobbin break um no it's a thread break not a bobbin break I mean it could be both but it's been doing this sometimes. Oops, <gasps> I'm unthreading my yellow. Okay, maybe I should put the camera down. Okay, fixed. Bobbin looks okay based on me peeking through this hole. <laughs> I can't see super well, but boop. The other thing about embroidered sleeves is I'm not sure how comfortable it would be because I can still put the cover up stuff on the inside so it's not too scratchy, but it would still like, as you bend your arm, even though it's on the outside, you probably feel it a little bit. That's kind of why I want to still, I want to still test it. Yeah, so there's a lot of unknowns with the sweaters at the moment, but I need to figure it out fast. This order's for Paulina. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. Oh, there's already a thank you card in there, right? In the bundle. <laughs> My new stickers aren't going to fit in these little sleeves because they're all three inches on their longest side. <laughs> so I might have to get some bigger sleeves. Although I can't remember what the size selection is. There aren't that many sizes to choose from. Like I might almost be better off just putting them in a sleeve like this. We'll see. I'll check. There's a lot of more packing supplies I need still. Like I'm gonna need some kind of sleeves to put the sweaters into. And then I'm also gonna need poly mailers because they don't necessarily need to go in a box, right? So 
there's that. Possibly some little label stickers too, although I could easily maybe make some. Now I'll probably just order it, but like once you have a sweater folded in and a sleeve, it would be nice to have a size sticker on it, even though you could maybe see the tag still, but you know, it's not the properly labeled so you can easily see what size you're grabbing when you're packing because it would be disastrous to send someone the wrong size. Oh yeah, I'm just gonna keep packaging. We're at 11 total. I was gonna close the store today, <laughs> but I might actually just keep it open one more week. You know, it's like the pre-shop update closed down. I think one more, one more. Okay, orders are packed. Let's check on this. What? Like what's going on over here? I might do the flowers differently. I might try doing kind of a radial stitch. So it's following a circular pattern towards the middle. The yeah, like what's going on with the flowers? What's going on? So it'll stitch like this instead of all in one direction. Goes in a circle. Boop. I'm just hoping that the center stitch is okay because I had to put a hole back in the middle of the flower in order to do this. And so I'm hoping the yellow centers don't look lumpy. <laughs> I did something similar with the leaves here where instead of going all in one direction, they're going in this direction on this leaf and this direction on this leaf, except I couldn't get it to do it as one piece without it like jumping and then overlapping. So I have a set so the overlap is right in the middle. You can kind of see this line here. It's kind of in the middle of the leaf. I was trying to get it right under this green thing, but that was the best I could do. So hopefully if it's not super seamless, it still looks okay. I was debating doing the directional thing for all the greenery. Have it kind of going out in specific directions, but I'm just gonna keep it like this for now. So I'll try stitching this out, see how it goes. And I am back below 50,000 stitches, which is nice. I'm at 41. So that should reduce our stitch time a bit. Okay, I helped Christian put away some groceries and then I got some food and I came back down to check on this. First time seeing it on the pink and honestly, it looks pretty good. The leaves are questionable because the leaves always look so good on the green because they closely match the color of the green sweater. But now they're the highest contrast item on the sweater. So you're gonna notice the cracks a lot more. And I do notice that seam a lot. So I'm gonna have to rework that. But I think seeing little bits of the sweater through, like that's just the nature of embroidery. It's not gonna be solid, solid, but this is looking so much better. Look at the flowers. Oh my God. There's a few really minor things like this, cause this starts here and ends here. So there's a teeny little something going on there. <laughs> this is a size bigger than the ones I typically wear. This is an extra large, but I'm getting a good look at it before I soil it with more embroidery. It's almost a shame to add more. Like this is a pretty good run. It's got a couple little imperfections, but like it looks pretty good otherwise. Oh, well, this is such a great thickness too. Not too, too thick. Not too thick, not too thin. I kind of like the size. It's like a little dress on me. <laughs> Okay, second pink stitch out is underway. I increased the pull compensation on some objects because I feel like it was too low. There is a setting in Wilcom called auto fabric, so you can set the fabric and it adjusts those kinds of things automatically, but I still feel like it was too low. So I bumped it up. I tweaked some stuff on the leaf so it does one leaf in its entirety, then the other leaf in its entirety, and it meets in the middle. So if there was a noticeable seam, it'd be right where the two leaves meet. I think somebody's a little spoiled. Wouldn't this be so cute though? Maybe down the sides of the sleeve, not down the front, but. Uh, we need more machines. <laughs> I'm not buying a second Melko until this one starts to pay for itself. Okay, tulip bun is not gonna fit nicely on a five by seven. Oh. <laughs> Why cruel world? 
Okay, maybe this is a good compromise. I just had a soft white border and then the top and bottom are just the normal top and bottom of this. Yeah, and then the full size version can be on imprint or is it already? I don't know, I gotta check. <laughs> I think it's already on there because I saw a file for it. This is what the Midnight Rain one looks like right now because I'm getting it printed through cap print and they're gonna add the white border all the way around. I've actually just placed the order and the mock-up showed up correctly. So it'll be white all around, but a bigger white border top and bottom because I didn't want to cut off the sides. It looked okay, but we've got a little vignette thing going on where the outer edges are darker. And if you crop the sides in, then you don't see that. You only see the darkness at the top. And so I want it to display the full artwork uncropped, which is why I did it like that. And it's not as extreme of a gap top to bottom as Tulip Bun was. So yeah, these are gonna be hollow prints from cat print five by seven only and tulip bun will also be five by seven from art ink print so those are the ones that are a matte finish and it's kind of textured just because you know tulip bun's kind of cottagecore vibes so i feel like that matches and then this one will have hollow shards which i think will look cool with the rectangular background oh my god i found the setting i found it <laughs> to fill a gap is that overlap setting it was set to one for all of my items, and so I've bumped it up to three. Oh, yes, okay. <laughs> well, we finally have a defective sandstone sweater. It's pretty mild considering it's in the armpit, but it's kind of like their thread just ran out or something. The double stitching suddenly just stops and there's a bit of a hole. So yeah, that's in the armpit, but that's the only thing that's come up with any kind of defect. So this will be my test subject for the sandstone. I don't know if I'll do that today. I've got one more pink stitching out right now. It's the third one on the pink. So I've done five on the green, <laughs> three on the pink. I didn't think it would take this much testing, but I am a newbie. And so we're learning things here. <laughs> right now it's looking so good so far, especially the flat pink and flat red. I think they're always going to look better before the seeds are put on because the stitches for the seeds kind of tug the pink and red threads a little bit and maybe expose small gaps. But yeah, that's looking real good right now. Um, I will continue waiting. <laughs> the other thing on my to-do list for today was to order mailer bags for the sweaters. And there's kind of two things I need. I need the sleeve that the sweater goes into just for general storage and protection. And then I need the actual poly mailer for mailing them out because I'm really unsure. <laughs> I'm unsure how how it's gonna work with these orders because what if someone gets like an eight by 10 print and a sweater? Like I'm not gonna put the print in the poly mailer, but I could if the print was in a flat rigid mailer first. Would that tear through the poly mailer? <laughs> like same goes for something like a planner pad. <sighs> I'm trying to think of how this would go. Because if it's just a sweater, poly mailer. Or if it's like a sweater and a pin, the pin could be tucked inside the sweater or something then stuffed in the poly mailer. It's just those odd combinations that are a little weird. <laughs> I'm trying to figure everything out. Like I don't really know the exact size everything's gonna be, but I've got like a 3XL here that I'm measuring and I don't even know if it'd be folded exactly this size because this seems like a good size based on my Googling for a single sweater. And then this would be for more, like if there's more than one. I don't know how many people are gonna get more than one, but you never know, you gotta be prepared. And then these are the clear ones they would go into for protection, just like the retail bags, and then these are the actual mailers. So let's give it a try. You could possibly fit two sweaters in this one, but I'm gonna get some bigger ones just in case. Uh, that's the thing I hate about eco and clothes. So expensive to ship to Canada, plus I always get charged customs. <laughs> okay, this is probably the best one yet, but we do have a little bit of something going on here. That's a little iffy, but not the worst. Hmm. And it's now the next day. It's Tuesday. I'm doing more embroidery tests because I'm trying out some new things. I actually made a pretty major change, a few changes, like overall it's completely different from what I was stitching yesterday. So 
So you know how I switched the flowers to be a radial pattern. So it's going like this instead of the fill being all one direction. Well, I did decide to do that with the leaves of the strawberries. So they're a similar thing. I'm just hoping that the seam between the green and red and the green and pink is okay because some of these stitches might grab the red stitches and pull them because when they were in the same direction it actually had a pretty nice joint but I still wasn't happy with how it was stitching out overall so yeah I made that change and I also split the leaf into two separate shapes so there will be some overlap right here in the middle but it was just so I could control the stitch angle a little bit better particularly in this area because it was going out this way going out this way but then in the middle it was going straight down and in order to cut across with like the stitch angle I'd have to have two separate objects so yeah I split those apart oh and I changed the way the fill stitch is done for everything except for the middle of the flowers which I realized I probably could update as well so there's this setting here partition line I saw a tips video saying to set that to one two three four five so I just did that and it just changes basically how the rows are stitched because it's a whole bunch of rows of straight lines but the needle stabbing multiple times within those lines and it's dictating how each row is offset from one another. So I'm curious to see if this will look a little better. So I have a couple things over here that were delivered. First of all, sound foam. I ordered two packs, so I'm assuming the rest is shipping separately, but I just got a little bit of it to see what it's like, because this can go in the embroidery room. And the idea is for this to be stuck to the wall around the machine. I feel like it'd also be nice to put some on the door. But then for other areas, I can just hang things. Like, I've already got a tapestry hung in there. I have another Beauty and the Beast blanket that I have hung as a tapestry in the past. That could go in there. Or even, like, hooks that display finished embroidered sweater designs. I don't know. <laughs> there are options, but I thought I would try out some of this. So, yeah, that's for the walls right around the machine. And I also got this gooseneck lamp. <laughs> it's really small, but I'm hoping it does the job. Is that already full brightness? Yeah, okay, there we go. Yeah, highlight all the grime around the stove. <clears throat> I thought this could go by the machine and I'm hoping it will clamp to those clear buckets I have stacked. And this can shine on the machine for when I'm trying to film embroidery, whether it's a clip for the vlog or if I'm doing an embroidery live stream. I need light to kind of cancel out the light from the machine because it makes it so hard to film. So this will just help hopefully light up the surrounding area so that it's all bright and not just like a little pinpoint light on the embroidery. So, yep, <laughs> we'll see if it works. I mean, I could probably bring it down and test it. It did not come with a block, so I gotta find one for it. I'm a mess. Oh, and I didn't show the full outfit yet. <laughs> It's a bit goofy, but it's comfy. Okay, there were some good things and some bad things with the stitch out. I don't think that partitioning setting helped. I think it made the fills look a little worse, but I'm liking the way the green tops look for the most part. I'm gonna make a little tweak over here. And this flower, I still kinda get the gap to close, even with playing around with some stuff. So I think I, uh, not I think, I did. I deleted this flower and I put this one over here. Okay, I tested the embroidery light, and it's definitely an improvement, but not as bright as I would like. But it, it is really small, which is nice, and I can clamp it right onto the handle of the stackable bins. So it's definitely an improvement in terms of filming. I might get a second one. That would probably fix my problem, because I don't want something too big. I could get a bigger light or like a ring light on a gooseneck, but... At what point is it too big? And at what point is it blocking me from accessing the machine properly? Because the machine light is still a lot brighter than that light. But if I get a second one, that would help. So my plan for tomorrow's stream is to do some sketching. And I want to prepare some reference photos in advance. So I just went through my Adobe Stock folder. Because I used to have an Adobe Stock subscription. And so I have a whole bunch of photos that I have officially licensed and I'm just gonna use them as reference and do studies of them. So I've singled out some, but I mostly saved pictures of people. 
because that's predominantly what I drew back then. <laughs> And so I also have a folder on my phone called plants and it's photos I've taken of plants and so I'm going to go through there too and draw some of that stuff. So the content is ready and I should show you, I did like one page of sketching the other night while sitting on the couch so I'll show you that. Here's the page. It's not super exciting but we have a woman, a frog, a dragonfly, a moth, and a bee. <laughs> So this is what's kind of inspired me to do the reference stream because that's what I did with this. I was just drawing stuff from reference and I want to do more of it. So that's why I'm choosing that activity for the stream. Okay, this is looking pretty darn great. This looks a little gappy. I think it just will because it's a darker thread color. One thing I did this time around is I made my stitch length longer because I had originally shortened it several iterations back and I put it back to a longer stitch length and I think that is helping out a lot and it's reducing the amount of time it takes to embroider. Now one thing I did is like I was playing around with that partition thing on the last stitch out I set it back to what it was at for this one but I feel like you can see rows of stitches like do you see this it's almost like co diagonal columns I feel like it's even more noticeable on the pink so I might set it back to the one, two, three, four, five thing. But other than that, I'm happy. I feel like this was the best attempt yet. Because every time I look back at the original one, I was like, maybe this one's the best, even though it's got some gapping issues. It kind of was the best. So we're kind of returning to that, but with the stitches a little closer to each other and a few other twinks. And man, this one's making me regret not going with green is one of the color options. Although I feel like the leaf green would need to be a little darker and maybe a bit more of a blue green compared to a yellow green. Like this just doesn't quite look right, but the strawberries look so good on it. <laughs> when I'm not buying more sweaters, I sunk thousands of thousands, like over $10,000 into sweater blanks already. I am not buying more until these ones sell. So when I went to decrease the spacing of the stitches on the green leaves, the number was too high. It was not set the same as the rest of my items. And I wonder if that's because when I cut it in half, it reset some settings. So no wonder it looked more gappy. Well, one, because it's dark color on a light sweater, but also because I literally had it set to be like that. <laughs> Cause she was geeky. I was made in the rain. Poor little Minouche last night. There was a pretty wicked thunderstorm. I've been waiting for a big one like that. So it was very exciting. But Midna gets so spooked and so we were up on the second floor and then Midna came scurrying down here because hiding amongst my shelves is her safe space. And so she was down here in the dark by herself, poor baby. <laughs> we did come to comfort her for a little while, but it's kind of sad because it's like, it's where she feels safer, but it's like, it's scary because you can see the storm a lot through the big windows and she's in the dark, poor little thing. And then Kiki's unfazed. She doesn't mind the storms. <laughs> Midna the gargoyle. Okay, I've got sketchbook out. I'm, I'll probably use this page for the thumbnail. Don't know if I'll use these, but I'll have them out. My pencils and erasers are upstairs currently. I'll have to grab those. This will be for reading chat and alerts, but I also brought up the laptop so I can bring up some of my Adobe stock images. I only have three selected, but that's how I can view them. And then the rest of the pictures are just on my phone. So are you smelling the spray I just put on it. I sprayed some fixative on that page. Oh my god. Here it is on the sandstone sweater. That looks really good. I love those colors together. I may have done something. I may have done something. <laughs> I just ordered two packs of the burgundy henna maybe three days ago. But then I was Googling about more hair dyes and hair dyes that could go on brown hair. <laughs> and I came across this this morning and I purchased it this morning and it was just delivered this evening. <laughs> so I'm trying it, okay? It shows that it's being a little purpley on brown hair, but that would be good because I'm trying to cancel out like the yellowy orangey tones of the henna. Cause that's been my one gripe with it. I, I love it, but it's still too orangey that's just the nature of henna. <laughs> so I'm hoping this will kind of tone it a bit. Cause I mean the henna is not too bad on my natural color. It's still slightly orangey, but everywhere where my hair was previously dyed, like where it was previously lifted, 
that's where it's orangey. Like I'm not gonna wait three years for my hair to grow out. You know, like I'm trying to tone it now. The only thing is this is probably not gonna last very long, especially since I like to wash my hair every day, pretty much. It'll show up on my forehead, that's for sure. Okay, it's the next morning. I went to bed with wet hair, so it's a little crazy, but the color pretty much did what I want. I'm trying to compare mirror versus camera screen. My camera tends to make my hair already look more red than it actually is. So the way it appears in my live streams is a little more accurate. But um, yeah, this did pretty much exactly what I wanted. Cause I want a pinky red, not an orangey red. But I don't think it's really gonna last. And I'm also not convinced it's that different compared to fresh henna. Whatever, I like, I like how it looks, so. <laughs> my scalp. Okay, I added a little bit of concealer to my part. You can still see purple around it, but I didn't want to go too crazy with the concealer and have just a trench of skin. <laughs> it's an improvement, it's an improvement. But yeah, it's stream day, so I gotta go set everything up downstairs and eat. I just spent way too long digging this thing out, getting it set up, taking off bits so I can put on a different tripod head. <laughs> and trying to get these cables to reach because they're too taut. And then just realized, I think top-down camera is best for this. Like sometimes I shy away from it because I'm scared my hand is gonna cover everything, but for sketching, I think it's gonna be fine. So I wasted all that time. Because we're just doing top-down camera view. <laughs> and that's a wrap. There are the illustrations. Q, 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 um, but yeah, that's a fun little spread, good variety. I did spray it once. I'm going to give it one more spray, especially since I was doing a couple little touch-ups <laughs> while chatting with people at the end of the stream. So yeah, let's give it one more spray because otherwise it's going to transfer when I close it. I've got this stuff. I have final fixative version like this and also a workable version. Usually I leave it outside while it dries, but I'm scared it's gonna rain, so we're bringing it back in. Christian's in here stitching the names on more sweaters. We don't have room for all these in here. <laughs> and more was actually just delivered. I gotta vlog in this spot more often. This is cute. I just put you here because my Copic case is sitting there right now, so it's perfect to set you on. But look at the backdrop. So there's a sleep study update. I was contacted early in the stream because <laughs> I've been waiting for a possible call because when I left the sleep clinic last, they said, if it's not sleep apnea, we will not contact you. Um, but we will let your referring doctor know and then you'll have to follow up with your doctor. And then they said, if it's mild sleep apnea, then they'll arrange a phone call with me, like a phone appointment. And then if it's moderate to severe, then I go back to the sleep clinic for an in-person appointment. So I've had my sound on in case I get a call and I ended up getting a text to arrange the phone appointment. So, does that mean I have mild sleep apnea? I don't know. <laughs> Based on what they told me, that's what I suspect. But I guess I'll find out for sure tomorrow. Cause maybe they didn't see sleep apnea, but they see something else. I feel like probably not because it's just a home sleep study. It wasn't done at a clinic. So it's not as extensive. So now I'm just like, oh, can we fast forward? Cause the, the appointment's gonna be tomorrow. So you'll find out in this vlog what happens. Um, the appointment's tomorrow at two. So I'll update you, I guess, on what they say. It's now the next morning and look at my hair. It's wavy.
So I got that triple barrel curling iron to add wave to my hair, but it was huge. It would get too hot. It was burning my fingers on the little handle. It was just all around not good. And I swear it was just gonna fry my hair off. So I returned it to Amazon and I got a comment saying to try the bedhead waver. Thank you, Iridescent, for the comment. <laughs> I saw the comment, looked it up, and immediately purchased it. And this is my result. I did kind of a thorough job. Like I spent about 15 minutes. For me, that's thorough. <laughs> like I might do a test where I don't pin up half my hair. Maybe if I just grab bigger sections, just for like a quick something. I don't know, I wanna experiment a bit more, but this was my first usage. Cute, cute. Maybe try not going so high on my head. But yeah, that it works way better. I can control the temperature more easily and it doesn't hurt my thumb. And it's not super heavy and it's got the deep wave. So it actually creates a decent wave because they were looking a little flatter. Like the end result was still kind of cute with the last one, but a bit flat. So this actually creates more wave. So exciting. And now I'm gonna start editing this vlog, but I'm not ending it yet because I still gotta update you about this, the call with the sleep clinic. Okay, I just had the appointment. <laughs> I do have sleep apnea and it is mild sleep apnea, which is what I figured based on the existence of the phone appointment. So my AHI was nine, which means I have nine events per hour because AHI is apnea hypopnea index. So that means I was having nine apneas or hypopneas per hour. So apnea is when you fully stop breathing, fully obstructed, and then hypopneas are partial obstructions. But looking at my charts here, they were all hypopneas except one. I only had one apnea. But yes, nine puts me in the mild category because anything from five to 14 is mild. And if it's 15 and above, it's moderate and 30 and above is severe. Although that doesn't necessarily correlate to the severity of your symptoms you feel. It's just how many events per hour. They could tell I spent most of my time on my back. And when I was on my side, there were no events. Although this shows that I was only on my side for six minutes, <laughs> which I don't think is entirely accurate. Cause I swear I was on my side for like at least the last hour. And I can see here that there were a lot of events in the last hour. So the greens, the hypopneas, this is the apneas. I had one at the beginning, <laughs> that's all it shows. So I'm like, okay. The greens are all the hypopneas and then Oxygen desaturation was 11 events per hour, but at the same time, this chart for oxygen saturation is pretty good, they were telling me. It says baseline 95, average 93, lowest 89. And pulse between 55 and 104, average of 72. Random spikes. <laughs> I don't know what those correlate to. And yeah, this purple showing all the time spent on my back. And then this is when it detected I was on my side. I would have said I was on my side over here, like, the last hour or so, so I don't know. Oh yeah, these orange ones are my snores. I snored 69 times, which apparently counts as no snoring. And looking at it on a chart like that, that does seem pretty minimal. Although my story definitely varies from night to night. <laughs> like, Christian, usually I still wear earplugs, but I don't know really how much because he puts his earplugs in and he falls asleep and stays asleep. So he wouldn't really know how much I snore. <laughs> so, yeah, it's kind of up to me what I want to pursue now. I would have to go back to the doctor that referred me and see what they think too and just what I want to pursue. I'm really undecided at this point because part of me wants to try CPAP but also part of me is just like, no, just like try harder to be more active, lose weight and that'll help and maybe try sleeping on my side more. I don't like it, but I would maybe, maybe I could get a pillow to partially prop me on my side. I can't even fall asleep on my side. I gotta be on my back to fall asleep. So yeah, they said for options, CPAP or the dental appliance that holds your jaw forward. There's a sort of mouth guard you can get and it's an electrical muscle stimulation. So you wear it before bed and it'll stimulate your tongue muscle for a while to kind of train it. And then you take it out when you go to bed, but I guess it's supposed to make your tongue not relax so much and fall in the back of your throat, like tones the muscle. <laughs> Upper airway surgery 
is always an option, but not recommended. Like it would depend, you'd have to get tested to see if there's anything even there. Like if there's any issues, you know? So they didn't recommend that for me specifically. And then also lifestyle modification, like being healthier, losing weight and stuff, reducing tobacco and alcohol intake. I only drink like once a month, so that's not a huge problem for me. Although the nights I do drink, oh boy, I snore. <laughs> Those are definitely rough nights in terms of sleep. <laughs> But um, like, I'm sure if I lost 50 pounds, I'd be cured. <laughs> but losing 50 pounds is a lot easier said than done, you know? Like I don't have to use a CPAP machine the rest of my life. But also if it worked, that would be a relatively quick fix, you know, like. Oh. The fact that there's like, there's only one recorded actual apnea, I'm like, maybe I don't need it. I feel like I at least want to try the weight loss route, no matter if I also pursue another route or not. I feel like this is the one thing that could push me to maybe actually stick to a routine and successfully lose some weight. Like I've got a real motivator now. It just seems like the most common sense thing to do. Why be tied to medical equipment if I could cure it by losing weight? Although it's not necessarily a guaranteed cure. There are people with healthy BMIs who still have sleep apnea, but I do feel like it would benefit me greatly in multiple aspects, not just in regards to sleep apnea. Like I'm sure I'd just be more energetic in general and feel better. I don't know. Talk, talk to me in the comments. <laughs> give me your anecdotes, give me your, <laughs> your experience. I mean, a lot of people are already telling me their apnea stories, but. Like, I'm not significantly impaired during the day, but my energy levels definitely aren't what they used to be. I'll feel groggy for at least four or five hours after waking up. I definitely have more brain fog than I used to, less focus and concentration, and I just feel like stupid a lot of the time. So something needs to be done, I think. I just don't know what. Oh, anyway, <laughs> those are the results. Uh, I'm going to end the vlog here because it's already really long. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs> yeah, here's my little home sleep study kit. Made a cracker. So I got instructed on how to use it and watched a little video to explaining what does what. And yeah, I use it for two nights and then I come back on Wednesday to bring it back. I'm going to go get that ice.